The infected blood scandal independent inquiry's final report is set to be published later on today. Yes, yeah, so the scandal has been subject of the biggest ever public inquiry in the UK after tens of thousands of people were infected with contaminated blood. Well, political correspondent Catherine Forster has more. Some of my friends have said to me, are you sure? Are you sure this is the NHS? Are you sure this is the The infected NHS? blood scandal is a story so shocking it almost beggars belief. In the 1970s and 80s, the NHS gave contaminated blood to over 30,000 people, to haemophiliacs whose blood doesn't clot properly, and to people needing blood transfusions. Infected with HIV or hepatitis C, over 3,000 have died. Sue Wathen was infected with hepatitis C through a blood transfusion. I had so many years of being unwell well, very ill, actually, um, but I um, just didn't know what was the matter with me. She only found out decades later. And I literally fell back into the chair I'd been sitting in, thinking this can't be right. The blood product Factor Eight was largely imported from the States, with blood often coming from prisoners and drug addicts. Warnings it was not safe were ignored for years. There are still two people dying every week uh, that were infected as a result of this scandal. Author and Sunday Times political editor Caroline Wheeler has been campaigning for victims for decades. I've spoken to many people who said that they've lost count of the number of funerals that they've attended because of this, but also the financial effect that this has had, people not being able to work uh, for many, many years of their working lives. Uh, some of them have made choices where they haven't had families, they haven't got married. Colin Smith was given infected blood during a routine ear operation aged two, despite an edict that it was not to be given to children. He died from AIDS at seven. And at a boarding school for medically vulnerable youngsters, 122 boys were infected. Victims say they were used as guinea pigs with no proper consent. The 30 still alive are fighting for redress. Victims have appealed to politicians for many years. Finally, the then Prime Minister, Theresa May, announced a full public inquiry in 2017. The final report is published this lunchtime. This was covered up for many years and the governments of all complexions have said there was nothing to see here, nothing that could have been done differently. Labour MP Diana Johnson, who's been campaigning for victims for years, is optimistic and now we will get the answers, hopefully, to what actually happened and who took the decisions which allowed that dirty blood to enter our NHS. And what we know is that this was probably the biggest treatment disaster in the history of the NHS. And on compensation, Caroline Wheeler believes this government is set to act. My understanding is that there will be a compensation package announced, that it will be northwards of 10 billion. That is a significant amount of money. It can't come soon enough. Uh, we have a WhatsApp group um, of a few of us and we call ourselves blood friends. Two of those people are terminally ill. This is what's happening to people. They are dying. Catherine Forster, GB News. Well, there we go. OK, so political correspondent at The Spectator, James Hill, joins us now for some analysis. Good morning, James. Um, Jeremy Hunt is expected to unveil £10 billion worth of compensation, perhaps even more today for victims. Is that going to be enough? Well, I don't think anything can really undo the sort of great stress that these people have endured for many years. Uh, obviously, I think not only was, you know, the initial infection and what the ha thereafter happened bad enough, but also the way in which successive governments have been involved in cover-ups for many decades has obviously exacerbated what's gone on here. Um, I think obviously, you know, the bare minimum that we could done is the necessary compensation, but also an apology from the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Uh, and we just hope, perhaps, that this is going to go some way to helping those people, mm. many of whom are terminal. And, of course, it's not just a, an issue of the past. Uh, we think someone dies every three or four days still from tainted mm. blood to this day.
It's such a shocking story when you hear the reports and you read all the details about it um, and, and the fact that this was covered up. And to be honest, the can has been kicked down the road so many times. And yet now we're told there's going to be a consultation period to work out exactly this sort of tariff system about the, how the money is going to be assigned to the victims in all of this. More delays. Surely there could be a quicker way of resolving all of this. And are we sure that all of that £10 billion is going to go to all of those who, who've been infected, well, this uh, affected by well, this? Well, this is what we hope. And obviously, we've seen from other scandals, such as, for instance, the post office scandal recently about the concerns that a lot of this money ends up in the pockets of lawyers. Um, I think, you know, ultimately, you have to get a sort of, um, you know, middle ground here between making sure the money does go as quickly as possible to the victims, mm. but also ensure that normal processes are followed. There should be about a five week uh, period of consultation. There will obviously have to be an act of parliament to kind of sign off this 10 billion to go through as well. The families just hope that it's not going to be caught up in any kind of July election and thereafter delay for a matter of months as a consequence of that. Mm. Well, Sir Keir Starmer has, uh, over the weekend, and pledged to make sure that if we do have a Labour government, then this situation won't be affected. But I do wonder, um, with £10 billion rumoured to be up for grabs, you, did, you alluded to it there, so many victims are dying day by day by day. Is this going to have to be ratified by certain government departments, which will inevitably, as Isabel alluded to, kick the can down the road even further. How many more victims are going to be dying whilst we wait for this to, to happen? And also, will the victims be able to sue the government and indeed the NHS so, after this? So I think that the report today by Sir Brian Langstaff, who has been the inquiry chair of this, is expected to be very damning. And one of the reasons for the recent delay in this inquiry has been a process called maximalisation, which is whereby everyone involved gets a chance to feed into the report before it comes out. Uh, and I think it's because it's going to be very damning of the institutions and individuals involved from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Mm. Um, so as a result of that, that's going to be one of the delays. And, and what about the idea of criminal prosecutions? I mean, nobody's ever been prosecuted for this. Individuals who were responsible for, mm. frankly, injecting humans with, with poison. Mm. Um, and, you know, it was a long time ago, maybe some of these people have deceased, but will this perhaps open the door to not only civil cases, but, but some criminal trials? There certainly will be those calls. Uh, I think you can look at other countries as well where these inquiries have wrapped up much sooner. So France and Japan, for instance, as some examples, uh, they, they had the opportunity to kind of go for criminal mm. prosecutions there. So I think we will see those kind of things. And I think also that you know, anyone involved in these kind of scandals, as we've seen from, for instance, the post office scandal where Paul Avenel has been very much in the headlines. Uh, there will be a lot of pressure for them to come forward into the spotlight as well. You, you mentioned it there. Some people that were named in the Sunday Times in recent weeks uh, of having apparently, I mean, they're dead so they can't defend themselves, but apparently having known that this blood was dirty, it was coming from America instead of using British clean blood, and they were allegedly getting uh, uh, bribes, uh, payoffs from the pharmaceutical companies for choosing US blood. Is there any thing uh, of that, of note in the inquiry set to be uh, alluded to? Well, I think it'll definitely be kind of going on the relationships between the Department of Health, the NHS and these pharmaceutical, com pharmaceutical mm. companies as well. I think also just the way in which the sort of uh, the NHS sort of rode in behind some of these civil servants and the Department of Health as well um, and sort of was able to hush it up because they thought they were actually from good attentions. Mm. Actually, you know, it should have been much more investigation done sooner mm. and let's hope they try and get some redress for these grievances and the way in which the mechanisms were conducted. Absolutely. James Hill, thanks very much indeed. Just to say, um, after 7 o'clock this morning, we're going to be speaking to one of the victims of this infected blood scandal. Um, he himself, a haemophiliac, and he was given these products at a school for disabled children, ruined his life, um, and he will give us his reaction, what he wants mm. to see from the inquiry published a little bit later on.